don't go anywhere. Because I'm about to show you guys how to improve the one thing you do in woodworking more than anything. I'm talking about making cuts. I'm Travis and this is how I do things and today I'm going to show you all sorts of ways you can get better cuts every time you use your saw. I'll discuss cuts on a table saw, a miter saw, and a circular saw. If you're interested in making your next project look more professional, then stick around to the end. Now let's get to it. But before you even make a cut, make sure you and your equipment are ready. Being blinded or losing a finger might cause you to mess up your cut. Not to mention maybe mess up other parts of your life as well. So always make sure you're using the appropriate safety gear and when necessary, a push stick or push blocks. Be sure the floor in the area around where you're working is always nice and clear. And if you have one, always use your dust collection system. Next is your blade. First, make sure it's the right kind of blade for whatever it is that you're cutting. If you start to see more burn marks, tear out, or you're noticing you have to push harder to make the cut, start by cleaning your blade. If that doesn't work, then have your blade sharpened or get a new one. Never trust that your tools are set up properly at the factory, and occasionally check your cuts for square. Most tools come with all sorts of adjustments to correct any issues you might have. Make sure your blade is cutting perpendicular to the workpiece. If you're cutting a miter or bevel cut, measure the blade angle so your parts fit together as you intended them to. If you're using a table saw, also make sure that the blade and your miter slots are parallel to your fence. If it's not, you could experience kickback, binding, pinching, or burning. Speaking of burning, let's talk about all the things that cause burning and how you can prevent it. Always make your cut with a consistent speed. Different woods and different blades will require different speeds. Pay attention to the sound of the saw and the force required to make the cut. You're going to have to get to know your saw and determine the best speed for your cuts. After a while, you're going to be able to tell if your saw is happy or not, and happy saw makes better cuts. When cutting with something like a circular saw or a jigsaw to make a straight cut, never try to freehand it. Always use a known straight edge to guide your cut. Or pick up a track saw like this one. It comes with guides that the saw rides on to make cuts very accurate. This is called tear out. It usually happens during a cross cut. A cross cut is when you're cutting perpendicular to the direction of the wood grain. It usually happens when the cut isn't properly supported and it's especially bad on things like plywood where there's a thin veneer of wood on the surface. Nobody wants to have to deal with visible tear out on their nice woodworking project, but the good news is there are some things you can do to prevent it. Probably the most important thing is that you're using the right blade for the type of cutting that you're doing. There are different types of blades for lots of different things like cross cutting, plywood, or ripping. There's also something called a combination blade that is okay at most things. Once you've chosen the new blade, make sure it's clean and sharp. For the cleanest possible cuts, you should also be using a zero clearance insert. This is the throw plate that came with my saw. A zero clearance insert replaces the factory throw plate in a table saw or a miter saw, and it does a better job of supporting the workpiece close to the blade, which reduces tear out. Also pay attention to which side of the board you're cutting. If you have a good side that's going to be visible on your final project, be sure to load your workpiece into the saw on the correct side. I'll use this table saw as an example. The blade is spinning in this direction and it cuts down into the top surface leaving a nice finish, but it exits the bottom surface potentially tearing it out. So that being said, on a table saw keep the good side up. On a circular saw put the good side down. A sliding miter saw is a little more complicated. If you're doing just a plunge cut, keep the good side up. When cutting a wider board, slide the blade away from you and keep the good side down. If you need to make a very high quality cut, make a scoring cut first. A scoring cut is a pre-cut that is only 16th to 1 8th of an inch deep. You could do this on a table saw or a miter saw. It works by reducing the pressure at the cut which reduces tear out. You could also do something similar by cutting the wood fibers on the surface with a utility knife. Using masking tape can help support the fibers when making a cut and is surprisingly effective at reducing tear out. And my final suggestion to reduce tear out is to use a sacrificial board. This helps reduce tear out by supporting the cut. So now that you're making these professional cuts, you're certainly going to be sanding less, which means I just saved you a ton of time. So with that time, you might as well hit like, subscribe, comment, and then check out one of these other awesome videos where I can give you some more tips that might save you some time. We'll see you guys in the next video. And my final suggestion to reduce tarot is to use a stack of... And my final suggestion...